coming up on TPI. I have this voice inside of me saying, Nikita is no longer with us. I took him by his neck and I start looking for a pulse. There was no pulse and there is no life. Hello and welcome to TPI. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Simisela Okai and I'm here in our Virginia Beach studios filling in for Moiwa. Don't worry, he'll be back soon. However, it's a joy for me to be here presenting you with truth, power, and inspiration. Now, if by the end of this program you leave with hope in your heart, then we've done our job. For this first story, please grab your tissue boxes because you are going to need them. Former country singer Granger Smith shares how the tragic and untimely death of his young son, River, led him to lay down his mic for music and instead pick one up for ministry. Here's his story. Everything had crumbled in that very moment, and I was destroyed. I reached in the drawer looking for the one thing that could help. This is the way to peace. Just squeeze the trigger. In 2019, acclaimed country music artist Granger Smith was on top of the world. Sold out shows, a loving family at home, it was all going so well. Until one fateful day. I was in the backyard with the three kids, just kind of uh, enjoying the last few moments before I headed off to tour. I was playing gymnastics with my daughter and the boys were playing water gun fight. The next thought was, it's quiet, where's River? Turned over my left shoulder and there he was in our pool, in the gated, locked pool, in the middle, floating face down. I flipped him over and he was like a rag doll. I panicked. I took him to the side, started CPR. Didn't know how to do that besides what I had seen in movies. It was a, um, an absolute nightmare. Granger and his wife Amber did their best to revive River until paramedics got to him, but it was too late their three-year-old son passed away at the hospital. I failed at the one thing a father should be able to do, keep their son alive. I failed at that. Feeling the guilt and shame from that, I realized that I needed to be the rock for my family. That ended up quickly turning into, I gotta go back to work. However, Granger soon learned that his pain wasn't something he could simply work through. I had this thing that I called the slideshow. And I had this, these visions that would pop into my head at any moment. It's River in the pool. It's the, it's the ambulances screaming down that county road. It's the doctor walking in saying he's not going to make it. And I couldn't get that slideshow out of my head. It would cripple me, absolutely cripple me. I felt like I was drowning. Granger tried everything to stop the slideshow. Therapy, self-help books, meditation. He grew up in a Christian home, so he began reading Bible devotionals. But the visions kept playing. Then a friend suggested Granger start vaping marijuana to help calm his nerves, which worked for a while. But it all came to a head one night on tour in Idaho, six months after losing River. Granger's band had just finished two back-to-back -back sold out shows and they wanted to celebrate at a nearby bar. Go to the bus and that, that's when it hit me when I saw the back of the bus, when I thought, this is the first time I've been drunk since it all went down. And as soon as I started thinking that, the slideshow popped in, I started sobbing. I was shaking, pulled out my gun, put the gun up to my head. That's when I had a thought. It was outside of my own consciousness, the best way I could describe it. But the thought was, this is the way to rest. I recognized that there was an enemy speaking to me. I said, Jesus, save me, please save me. And the slideshow stopped. I dropped the gun onto the floor and fell asleep in peace. That next morning, was day one of a new journey, a new journey for me. Who is Jesus? Who is he really? Not this, not the one that I talked about in Sunday school and not, not, not the one that I claimed as a cultural Christian, but who is the power of this man, of this name? Granger looked online for the one preacher whose name he knew off the top of his head, Billy Graham. He listened to more than a hundred of Graham's sermons over the next several weeks. I loved it. It was watering that seed in me. Then 
it all came together. I was driving in my truck. I was just randomly going through this sermon. He was speaking out of John 14. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. My eyes were opened. The first reaction through the tears was, Lord, Jesus, rule my life. Take control. I give everything to you. I surrender. I turn from my sin. Let me serve you. Everything else is rubbish. I started learning who he is, the one that saved me. I learned who he is through his word, through absorbing his scriptures, just pouring them on me. And it started changing me. On August 26, 2023, Granger performed his final show, leaving his 24 years in music behind to focus on studying the Bible and sharing the love of Jesus with all those who listen. His family was also blessed with another child, Maverick, and he recently wrote a book, Like a River, hoping to comfort others through his story of loss and redemption. Granger says he found a new purpose in Christ and that by trusting him, we can all find healing. I didn't need the weed pens. I didn't need the meditations. Now I knew what would save me. And it wasn't in myself. It was in Christ. And the slideshow, it didn't stop, but it lost its sting. I felt peace. I felt joy. I felt rest in the surrender. Praise be to God that he broke me, that he completely broke me down to nothing so that I could rely on nothing but him. Praise God that he did that. I can't take credit for it. I miss that boy, but I know I'll see him again. That's the new feeling now. That's the grieving with hope that Christians are promised. You know, out of something so painful can grow something so meaningful. God will give you beauty for ashes when you put your trust in him. Speaking of pain, after the break, a man suffers injuries from a car accident that are so severe, doctors don't even believe he'll make it through the night. Your husband's not gonna live. You're not gonna see him tomorrow when you wake up. You're going to have to plan his funeral. Your Turning Point experience doesn't have to end when the program is over. Follow us on your favorite social media. Welcome back. No pulse, a cracked spine, a deflated lung, a torn spleen, and a traumatic brain injury. That was the condition of the man in our next story after being in a nearly fatal car accident. His injuries were so severe, even the doctors couldn't explain how he escaped death. Take a look. I remember I was looking at him and I was like, how am I gonna tell my daughter that he's gone? And that's when I just start praying. May 19th, 2022. Standing in her driveway, Olga heard a loud crash just moments after her son-in-law, Nikita, left her home. She ran to the scene, overwhelmed by what she saw. I remember I have this voice inside of me saying, Nikita is no longer with us. I kind of took him by his neck and I start looking for a pulse. I couldn't find anything. I knew that there was no pulse and there is no life. Olga called her church prayer chain and then 911. Time ticked by with no signs of life. I just start praying. I speak life. I speak life. Life come back to Nikita. Because I know God can do miracles. It's nothing impossible for the Lord. Then after several minutes, the miraculous. He brought him back. He started breathing and I start yelling, he's breathing, he's breathing. And they said, okay, don't touch him. Don't touch him. The help is on its way. EMS soon began cutting Nikita from the wreckage. He suffered a host of life-threatening injuries, including a fractured C1 vertebrae, 
collapsed lung, torn spleen, and traumatic brain injury. After several hours, his wife Alona, who was near full term with her second child, remembers seeing him in the ICU. It was really hard. I began bawling my eyes out, and I came and I just held his hand. And at that moment, he did look very lifeless. There was, it felt like there was not much life left because he had breathing tubes in. So many wires were connected to him. Prayers were offered up around the world. Family in Russia, Ukraine, and across the U.S. were praying for Nikita's survival and healing. We knew that we had to lean into him. He was the only one that could carry us through it all. Honestly, all we could do was pray and believe that God was going to do his work in this, that he was going to bring a miracle to our lives. Alona spent the first night wrestling with her thoughts and struggling to believe that God would heal her husband. Your husband's not going to live. You're not going to see him tomorrow when you wake up. You're going to have to plan his funeral. And all these thoughts kept flooding my mind. And then I just hear the Lord's voice saying, your husband will not die. Do not fear. Do not fear. And I knew that at the, right then and there that God's spirit was much stronger than the enemy's voice. Due to the extent of Nikita's brain injury, doctors said he would require more than six months in low light conditions and extensive time in rehab. However, over the next few days, Nikita began showing signs of recovery that went beyond anyone's expectations. They're like, we don't know how, but the swelling in his left frontal lobe actually went down and they were all just amazed to see how well Nikita was doing and how he was even responding already on day three. After that, really began the journey of faith and believing God for the more, believing God that he was gonna completely restore my husband and fully heal him. Just under two weeks after the accident, Ilona gave birth to their second child. Nikita's healing progressed so well that he was wheeled down to the delivery room to welcome his newborn son into the world. He just kept smiling the whole time and he took Ezra and like he just kept saying Ezra, 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 Ezra and the whole time he just keep, kept repeating his name. Miraculously, just two weeks after the accident, Nikita was discharged from the hospital and spent only one week in rehab before returning home, thankful. Recovery is it's a gift from the Lord if you can recover. My spine was cracked and I didn't get paralyzed, you know. I had a deflated lung and I'm still breathing. I had a torn spleen and they didn't have to cut my spleen out. So I, I'm thankful that he allowed me to live. I'm thankful that I can see my kids, that I can hold my newborn. It's a, it's, a, it's a testimony and God can say, you know, that's my kid and that's what it did for him. And this is, this is, this is how great I am. Cause I can, you know, I can raise, he was dead, I can bring him back to life. He had a traumatic brain injury, I can heal it. I mean, he had a, he had a crack in his spinal cord, boom, healed. Just to see how our prayers came to life and God did this for us, it was, it was the biggest blessing we could ever have walked through. And that just gave us so much hope that He's our peace, He's our comforter, He's our joy, and He's the only one that will get us through this. Adding miracle upon miracle, shortly after the car crash that nearly took his life, Nikita began long distance running. In November of 2023, just a year and a half after the accident, he completed his first marathon, an expression of praise and thanks to God, who gave him back his life and health. I owe it to him. Everything I have, I owe it to him. I wasn't walking and now I'm running a marathon. Tell me, tell me something that, I mean, that's it's unreal, unreal. Come what may, my faith will stand because it's in Jesus. And I saw how the Lord took us from the darkest season of our lives every single day. He didn't leave us, He was near to us. In our weakest moment, He was still there, you know? Even in the darkest season of our lives, God was still faithful, He was still merciful to us. Even in your darkest season, God will never leave you. Let Nikita's story be a reminder to you that God still works miracles. Well, after the break, a woman is trapped in a cycle of disappointment and heartbreak, searching for love in all the wrong places. Stay with us. You don't want to miss her incredible story. I literally remember being on my knees, 
begging her, what can I do so we can just have peace? I'm tired. She bent down to eye level to me and told me I could help her by blowing my brains out. Call us at 0300-140-0067 or visit cbneurope.com forward slash TPI. Welcome back. Lauren Vaughn was like many young women, eager to find love and settle down with someone who truly saw her worth. However, her quest for love was met only with heartache and regret. Yet one encounter with perfect strangers would change everything. I literally remember being on my knees, begging her, what can I do so we can just have peace? I'm tired. She bent down to eye level to me and told me I could help her by blowing my brains out. By her early 20s, Lauren had been in several lesbian relationships, each one promising love and each becoming physically and emotionally abusive. I was looking for just unconditional love. I was looking to be accepted. I wanted to belong to somebody, you know, really be wanted. Her desire for unconditional love began when she was a young girl, desperate for her mother's affection. If I do enough, if I achieve enough, then she'll love me, then she'll see me. Same thing with my father. If I learn a new thing, if I be the son he never had, if I'm the best daughter out of the three, then they'll love me. It, it was an unattainable goal to have to try to earn another person's love. For Lauren, the only time she ever felt seen by her mother was when she was being punished and the beatings were severe. Beat till your skin is split open. Beat to where you're hidden so that no one sees how bad you're beat or beat so bad that you get sent out of the state to another relative's house to hide that. In her teens, Lauren thought she found an escape from the trauma when a lesbian friend opened her arms and offered her attention and affection. It was unhealthy from the get-go. I attracted someone that I had to work for, that I had to produce, show why I was worth loving. When that relationship ended, physical and mental abuse from her next partner became even more severe than what she'd ever experienced at home. That was verbally abusive, physically abusive, sexually abusive, and I literally remember being on my knees, begging her, what can I do so we can just have peace? I'm tired. I'm worth nothing at this point. At the prompting of her partner, Lauren attempted suicide by overdosing on anxiety medication. She woke in the hospital ashamed at what her life had become. It was just embarrassing. It was very hard for me um, to deal with the choices that I had made, and then on top of that, deal with other people's judgment as a result of the choice that I made. And, and I failed at, you know? So it was hard. It was very hard. Then one day, while visiting her grandmother at church, Lauren was embraced by a different group of women, Christians, who loved her and prayed for her. It just seemed like all these people came to lay hands on me, and I just broke down and just remember, just think, listening to what they were saying and, and how they were praying for me just really was speaking to my soul. And um, I, got, I got deliverance that day. It was the first time I felt God's presence. It was real to me. It was really real to me, you know, to hear people say, uh, oh, Jesus is real, and oh, God changed my life. I've heard it, but to experience it, to have that moment where you feel like you've been seen, it was a big deal. Lauren left the lifestyle and was radically changed as she began to experience the unconditional love of God. When I first came to Christ, I didn't understand how someone would love me without me having to do anything to earn it. Now I had an understanding that I'm loved. I don't jump through any hopes and hurdles for anyone to love me back because God loves me. 
the maker of the universe. The, I look at the sun and be like, wow, the God who created that is crazy about me. He loves me. And that he loved me before I was even in my mother's womb. She says she has also been set free from any shame from her former life and choices. There is no condemnation because I'm in Christ Jesus. All I got to do is just keep my eye on the prize, keep going forward, keep walking in this, this faith walk out, and he's going to take care of the rest. Lauren encourages others who've experienced similar fruitless searches to turn to God as the true source of love and emotional healing. You're never too far. You're never too far gone. You're never too deep in your pain, too deep in whatever choices you've made that God can't bring you out and redeem your life, make it into something that you don't even recognize. He takes everything and turns it for his glory when you give it to him. Yes, God can take every negative experience you have been through and work it for his glory if you surrender to him. I challenge you to put your trust in God today. Give him your pain, your disappointments, your mistakes, and even your heartbreaks. Lauren thought she wasn't worth loving, so she accepted abuse. Yet God opened her eyes and showed her she's loved unconditionally and eternally. You know, there's one person who will always see your value and your worth, and his name is Jesus. Jeremiah 31.3 says this, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. Jesus is drawing you in right now. Just open your heart and receive the love he has for you today. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I want to receive this love that you're talking about. And right now, I just repent of all my sin. I turn from doing things my way. And I say, Lord Jesus, I want to do things your way. I want to commit my life to you. I know you died on the cross for my sin, and I'm putting my faith fully in you this day and trusting that you're going to redeem me, restore me, and give me a new life in you. Thank you for hearing me today. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, if you need prayer or you'd like to know more about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus, please message us on WhatsApp. We have prayer counselors standing by to pray with you and answer your questions. For our viewers here in North America and in Europe, you can call us using the numbers on the screen. You can also find our contact details on our website. Don't go away because after the break, we have music that will make your soul sing. Call us at 0300-140-0067 or visit cbneurope.com forward slash TPI. Welcome back. I want to invite you to join the TPI family. As a member of the TPI tribe, you'll receive our monthly newsletter and are automatically entered into the giveaways we have. Also, please take a moment to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, where you can interact with viewers from all over the world. You don't have to do life alone. The TPI community is here for you. Well, we've come to the end of the program. We hope you are feeling refreshed and inspired. It is always our goal to leave you better than we found you. Before I go, I have one final thought I want to share with you. It's a quote from H. Jackson Brown, and it says this, Never deprive someone of hope. It might be all they have. We leave you with music today from Austin Omozeje, featuring Victor Atenaga singing Ovi, which means king. From all of us here at TPI, goodbye and God bless.
Holy, holy. 